So, we now have it to where the CV axles can both attach to either side. We still need to drill the holes and everything. But uh, we need to, next, we need to work on figuring out how we're going to be holding this piece onto here, which is, it's kind of a challenge. It's kind of a challenge because everything needs to be perfectly flat on, on here, so therefore uh, the CV axle can mount onto here. So we, we're gonna have to, obviously first we gotta cut this to size. I think I gotta take like 20 or 30 thou off because the distance that uh, this and this needs to be uh, apart from one another is seven and three quarter inches. So I gotta take a little bit of material off of uh, this. We gotta drill and tap a hole so therefore I can uh, put a bolt through here and then make some type of collar that goes onto here but everything needs to be perfectly flat which is gonna be a bit of a challenge to do that so then once we do that then we can broach the keyways in this which nor normally I like broaching the keyways before welding the hub onto here but I had to do this first hopefully welding this didn't cause the metal to harden in any way It's a bit sketchy, but I don't know, it's, it should work, hopefully. Hopefully it won't come flying off of here. I'll just take really, really light cuts, I guess. Now it's time for the piece that holds it all together. So next, we gotta broach all four keyways into this hub.
Now, in case you guys are wondering how I line up the uh, the internal keyways with the external keyways when I'm doing this, because basically these are machined perfectly spaced from one another. I just basically just need to copy it. So I basically just put it on here, put a key into here, and then I twist it one way. Then basically just take a razor blade and then mark a line on the next side. I want to put the keyway, rotate it the other way. Put a line on here, and then that basically just leaves a mark on where I need to put the next keyway on this thing. Then I basically just eyeball it in between those two lines. It's not perfect, but it seems to work great, and I haven't had any issues uh, with it yet. And it lines up perfectly once I'm done. Alright, so next thing is we got to start drilling the holes on both of these, therefore we can actually mount these CV axles onto here just like that. Now, normally I'm used to stuff like this being some weird metric size. I don't use metric hardware, so I was originally thinking of drilling these out to half inch because I have all these half inch bolts, but I actually just noticed that these 7 16 bolts that I have do actually fit in here and they're not super loose. so. Let's just use 7 16 uh, half inch is a little overkill, we don't need that, so I'm just going to have to run to Tractor Supply to get some more of these, because I think I only have like three or four of these uh, of these shorter 7 16 so then once we do that, once we drill the holes on both sides, we got to shave some weight off of this thing, it's starting to get just a little heavy. Alright, I'm curious if we can uh, lighten this thing up just by a little bit. This thing right now, without the bearings and without the hub for the sprocket, this thing weighs 9 pounds, 10 ounces. So let's see if we can remove a little bit of thickness off of these, a little bit of thickness off of that. See if we can lighten this thing up just by a little bit. So, I was able to shave off a little bit of thickness on these plates, as well as take just a little bit of material off of this. So, let's see how much this thing weighs now. <laughs> 8 pounds, 15 ounces. So I shaved off almost, almost a pound. 
Yeah, this thing doesn't really feel any different. Final piece of this puzzle. Let's start working on machining the hub that's going to be carrying the sprocket. That's going to go in the center of this. Uh, basically the same as the previous hubs we've built for this project. We got a board inch and a half hole in this. Machine four keyways. Uh, well, this piece of plate on here. Machine it to size. Drill the holes. And then this thing is pretty much done. Alright, so the front wheel drive setup is finished for this thing. Now, how this is all gonna be, how this is all gonna work, how this is gonna be set up is basically, I'm building it pretty much almost identical to how the CBR1000 project is set up, where it's chain driven trailing arm suspension, you know, the engines in the back, that goes, up, you know, has a chain going from the engine up to the T90 transmission. I need to find another T90 transmission for this project and then that goes to a inch and a quarter jack shaft that also works as a pivoting point for the uh, for the trailing arms but this one is going to have another chain going from that jack shaft in between the driver's seat and the passenger seat going in in between those up to this and then that is going to be four wheel drive but that chain and this setup is not going to be constantly spinning in two wheel drive I have figured out a way to where in two wheel drive this is not spinning and that chain in between the seats is not spinning. Basically I have found, uh, I have found these and, and by the way these CV axles and these hubs and these are from a Polaris or no a uh, Ford Ranger, a, 90, a 1999 Ford Ranger and these I believe are called momentary vacuum locking hubs. I was really trying to figure out a way to uh, to have locking hubs where I didn't have to get out of the vehicle and manually lock them. I know that's really popular with Ford Rangers, and I didn't want to have to do that. It'd be awesome if I could like hit a button or move a dial or something and be able to have the lock the hubs lock. And I found these, and in my research, I did find 
that on older Ford Rangers, these are kind of problematic. They don't work that, that great, and uh, people actually tear these off and replace them with just manual lockers. But it's not this that's actually the problem. It's actually just the vacuum line that's going from the engine to these just rots out and falls apart, and that's what causes on older Ford Rangers for uh, these to not work. So as long as we use good vacuum line and, you know, they don't rot out, these should work. Uh, they should work just fine. Because originally I was like looking at these up, I was looking up these and it's like I'm finding a lot of information on how to bypass these and to tear these off, like why are they such a problem, but apparently it's just the vacuum lines. And on the, on the jack shaft for the chain that's going to be going, you know, to this, I'm going to be making a, basically it's going to be a half of one of my two-speed transmissions to where I just move a lever and it like disengages the sprocket that's going to be going, you know, from the jack shaft to the chain, so therefore in two-wheel drive, that chain and this setup is not not spinning, so therefore we don't have that, you know, that noise and that extra drag on this vehicle in two-wheel drive and in four-wheel drive. I basically just have to move a lever to engage that uh, for the for the chain, and then I have to hit a button or move another lever to engage these, and then that engages four-wheel drive for this project. So that's how the four-wheel drive chain-driven, whatever I'm calling this, is going to be working for this project. Now, actually, I just bought the engine for this project. Originally, I was planning on just buying another CBR1000 and actually turboing it for this project to get a little bit more power, because this project is going to be a little bit bigger. It's going to be four-wheel drive, bigger tires, two-seater. And I'm like, there's no way I can just use the same engine as the CBR1000 project. So I'm like, maybe I could turbo this CBR1000 for this project. But uh, I found a much better engine that is uh, has a lot more power. And I'm not saying what the engine is. I want to keep it a secret. Once it gets here, I'll show you guys what it is. But yeah, I'm super excited about it. It should be per this engine is actually perfect for this for this project. So anyway. We still need to build the spindles as well as the brake discs for this project. We do need to build like custom brake discs that uh, mount onto here, but are offset, basically kind of similar to how normal car brake discs are, where we have to offset them by like uh, two or three inches or something like that. I don't know. We got to figure that out. As well as we need to build the spindles that these mount to, that have the hind joints and all that kind of stuff. So once we build those, then we can start working on building the frame for this project, and uh, I do need to find another T90 transmission. And I can find one on eBay for about like 800 bucks, brand new, so I may just I may just do that. I'm trying to find one uh, that's used, but used are still like six or $700, so I may just spend $800 and buy a brand new one. But yeah, I'm getting excited. I've, I've been really wanting to build another version of the CBR1000 project, and, and we are finally, finally doing it. We're making it bigger, better, more power, four-wheel drive, bigger tires, two-seater. So yeah, I'm excited about this project. So uh, anyway, next video, brake discs, spindles, video after that. Hopefully it's going to be starting to work on building the frame, but no promises there. This stuff takes, takes a long time to machine this kind of stuff. So anyway, that's it for this video. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see you in the next video.